In today's video, I'm going to be going over five things women secretly want men to do, but will never say. I'm going to be giving you men the secrets that will not only allow you to understand women more, but also perhaps how to show up in a impactful way, not only for you, not only for the relationship, for your partner, or for the women that you're desiring, but also what that means to you as a man when you can show up in a way that provides purpose more than you know. So starting off with number one, I'm going to address the thing that perhaps will not be obvious to men. A woman desires a man who has the ability to say no to her. And this is something that's not only really important early on in the relationship, so you don't develop a people-pleasing tendency to your partner that allows you to feel isolated in your own truth. Now, I say this because I feel like a lot of women test men early on. And I'm saying this now because if you guys know or don't know, women tend to test men, especially early on in the relationship, to see his boundaries, to see his limits, to see how he treats her in her emotional states. Now, yes, women are very emotional. I would say more so than men, which men are more on the logical side, but we all have, you know, logic and emotions. However, women find it very important. And I will say this like with a hundred percent truth in my being, when a man can say no to me, when I'm not showing up in my highest good for myself or my relationship, if he says no, because he sees a better direction for me to go, whether it be no to certain outfits even that you know you wear and obviously you don't want a man who's controlling but a man who has your best interest in mind by his ability to say no to you is so so important and it allows a woman to respect you and i feel like if a woman does not respect her man there will be no attraction there for both parties respect is so huge not only for a man but for a woman to have to her man to look up to her man to trust her man not only does this allow you to state healthy boundaries early on in the relationship, but it also allows both parties to have a say. Now, sometimes your woman may say no to you when you're not showing up in, in a way that's to your highest good. And for good reason. I feel like when we have a partner, they're our teammate. And we want a teammate that can check us when we're not you know, showing up to the game in the best way that we can. Number two on my list is something that I am even feeling a little apprehension saying just because of how our society is programmed, but I'm going to say it anyways and maybe trigger some people, but also speak some truth. And a woman wants to be taken care of by a man. And I know there's a lot of push and pull within this relationship dynamic of what it is to be masculine, what it is to be feminine. However, I do really want to put into perspective for a woman to truly be in her femininity. It will require a man who at least desires to provide in some sense. Now, when I say provide, a lot of people just think of money financially, and it's so much more than that. It's what can you provide her to allow her nervous system to rest within you as a man. Now, this is something that all women to some degree on their just biological level will deeply, deeply desire a man who can provide, who can take care of her, who can cover the small things in life or the big things in life or both, who has that a part of his purpose to take care of his woman, the woman that he commits to because within that commitment a man can make by providing it will allow her to really be able to relax into the feminine qualities men desire secretly within women not even secretly anymore at this point we desire the basics of what our attraction requires quite frankly it's very attractive for a man to have some sort of initiative within wanting to provide for the household whether it be just you and your partner or perhaps you guys are thinking of children and, and he's ready to take on that challenge of what do i need to do to foster enough strength in my masculinity to want to go out into the world and fight for my family 
to provide for my family, to provide for my woman, because I have taken her on as a part of myself. Third on my list is complimenting a woman's uniqueness. Now, we are living in a day and age where everyone is kind of morphing into this same sort of type of woman where, you know, I feel like we've been on social media for long enough now where we kind of know what that means. It's like that perfect filtered face, the nice body, kind of the Photoshop even aspects of what it means to be a human, which is on a screen, which isn't real. So when you're interacting with a woman and you notice something about her that stands out, whether it be her eyes or her nose or, you know, maybe the parts of herself that she even finds insecurities within and she opens up to you about them, allow yourself to compliment those parts to say, that's what makes you, you. And I think for a man to do that will really make a significant impact on her self-image. And I feel like our insecurities are, you know, there because other people have told us something about them. So for you to kind of heal that storyline and you actually find beauty within it, that will really allow her to go back home and take a second look at herself or a second glance and perhaps see the beauty that you saw while interacting with her. And I think this is something all women deeply desire, secretly desire within a man to notice her uniqueness and to not to just see her as this sexual object, but to see the parts that perhaps have nothing to do with her sexuality, but it has everything to do with her and who she is and her uniqueness and how far that can go for a woman is tremendous. Number four on my list is something I think a lot of men can relate to that they, they do with women. And it's when a woman comes to you with a problem or comes to, or comes to you in some sort of distress, a lot of men's initial response is to fix it. Men are logical, men are fixers, they see a problem, they, they want to fix it, especially when they see their women in sadness, distress, pain. Their initial response, of course, is going to be, how can I problem solve for them? But what men don't understand, when a woman comes to you, showing you a part of her life or a part of her pain, she doesn't want a man to just discount her pain and just think of the solution. A woman wants a man to see her in her pain, to see her in whatever distress she's in and not initially wanting to jump to conclusions or jump to a game plan, but actually say, baby, I see you. I see you in it. How can I better support you through this? Rather than here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Oh, let's go get this. Or a woman's going to feel very discouraged within her ability to show vulnerability to you as if you're not even seeing her at all within her pain. It's as if you're afraid of her in that. And within that initial response, it may not make sense to a man because obviously if someone's in distress, you're going to want to help. But sometimes the greatest way to help is by looking her in the eyes and saying, I see you. How, like I said, how can I better support you through this? It's giving her the permission to inquire within herself of what she needs. Because a lot of the times women in the, in the moments where she's feeling distress, she doesn't necessarily need to know what she needs to do about it. She, we as women like to embrace emotions like head on. I feel like more so men have a harder time doing that with women. When we're in an emotion, we're in it. We're feeling it. We're embracing it. And for a man to push it away by neglecting her within the emotion, rather focusing on the future timeline of her out of that emotion, it discounts what she's in completely. And I know this may not make sense, but seriously, just try it out. Um, try it out. Just seeing your woman in whatever she's in and saying, I see you, I hear you, and how can I support you? It will go a long way. And last but not least is a man who is spontaneous, a man who has an ability to have fun. Um, and that could look like during a work week, texting her or scheduling an, something with her that's 
something that's totally maybe out of your comfort zone or her comfort zone, but allows you to be in that moment together is something that's so exciting and also really connective. I think a lot of the times when we're trying to follow the orders of like how we should act, how we should present ourselves, how we should talk, it gets heavy and it gets overwhelming. So for a man to be like, listen, uh, let's go to date. Let's go to an arcade. Let's go have fun. Let's go let our inner children play. She's going to be like, I haven't done that since I was a kid. Yeah, let's go and do it. Or maybe planning a trip away like that's close or a staycation or something that gets you guys out of your routines, out of your structure, out of your limitations and into the moment together. This could look like a physical activity, like let's go rent, rent bikes and go biking. Uh, let's go hike this cool spot that I found and go, I don't know, swimming in a lake. I, I don't know. You guys can come up with the adventure and, and develop that spontaneity to have fun and to have fun with your partner or the person you're getting to know. Women truly do desire a man to take lead. And I feel like when a man can take a lead in a way that's allowing you guys to connect on a human level, that human level to have fun, to laugh, to just be with one another without feeling pressure to, like I said, act any other way than who you are naturally. And I think, you know, activities that kind of put you out of your comfort zone um, get you to connect to your heart center rather than your mind and that will really produce a beautiful interaction that will be memorable to a woman um, a woman doesn't want to necessarily plan those things i feel like it's really attractive when a man can take initiative of you know even even if she's having like a bad week or a work week or she's going through stress being like baby i plan something and i'm not going to tell you about it uh, but wear this plan for this and I will see you there or I'm going to pick you up and be sp spontaneous about it. A lot of people hold themselves back from having fun or scared of spontaneity because they're too over identified to outcomes, let go of outcomes and overcome the mind in the limitations that we can put upon ourselves. And before I end today's video, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching where we can go over topics similar to this, whether it be dating, personal life, aspirations, goals, you name it. My email is down below and I look forward to hearing from you. If you guys like today's video, give it a like, hit the subscribe button, it goes a long way. And I appreciate you guys more than you know. I will see you in my next video, bye.